Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Spilling the Beans. Today I'm sitting down with Sarah Maxwell. She's been our Director of Operations and Director of Membership for our Mastermind for the past two and a half years. And it is super sad, but kind of bittersweet because she's leaving and taking the things that she's learned from the mastermind, the, the connections, the insights, uh, the relationships, and she's actually, the, the reason she's leaving our mastermind is so that way she can go and pursue real estate investing and real estate development. Her husband is a developer um, and a builder, and she can help him grow his business through the resources that she's gained from the mastermind. So it's as, as much as we hate to see her go, we actually love the idea and, and are super excited for her next chapter in, uh, in life because it's a real world uh, like testimonial, right? Results of, uh, of what our mastermind, what our coaching and what Legacy Family stands for. And so I'm excited to sit down with her, talk about her um, you know, transition and her understanding and coming from the healthcare world into this industry, uh, hanging out with real estate investors, real estate entrepreneurs, and realizing, hey, I can do this. And so I'm excited to sit down and kind of just, you know, ping some ideas and thoughts off of her and, and extract some uh, value that we can then pour forward to you so that way you can take those same insights, those same borrowed beliefs that she's had and implement them in your business to take things to the next level. So let's go sit down pour with Sarah. forward to you. So that way you can take those same. Miss Sarah Maxwell, how are yeah, you? Yeah, good. good to see you. Um, thank you for having me. Well, I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited. I think there's going to be a, a very unique perspective, right? We have a lot of people who are seasoned real estate investors on spilling the beans, and um, but I mean we've had Cam, we've had Jed, we've had some of the other team members, yeah. and. Um, I think this is a great time to have you on Spilling the Beans, right? Yeah, and absolutely. so what I, let's start with this, all right? A lot of the people are familiar with you. So Sarah's a director of operations, and, um, but you come from the medical industry. You yes. come from the medical industry. Your husband's a contractor. Um, they've actually met Hank. Hank's been on Spill the Beans before. And um, uh, you've, you left the medical industry a few years ago, came into be essentially our director of membership or director of operations at Legacy Family and the mastermind and the education business and kind of got exposed to a lot of amazing people, a lot of amazing ideas, a lot of amazing opportunities and that has transpired into you essentially joining, um, kind of kind of parting from Legacy Family and the, and the mastermind and pursuing these opportunities with your husband and going that hell route. And so it's very interesting um, and I think a really cool perspective to see the power of being, putting yourself in that room, right? Yeah. And the thing that, that you learn and the relationships that you cultivate and a lot of those things of, of how that growth occurs. And so that's, I think, a good theme to get going with. But let's start kind of at the beginning. So let's give everybody a little background on mm -hmm. what your, what your, um, what your background is and having a, you have a PhD, don't you? I have a doctorate. Yeah, a doctorate. I'm a, I am a doctor of physical therapy and I still am. I've kept my license. I told Hank, I'm like, I work too hard for that yeah. to let my license expire. So it's um, like, that's like Kate. She still has her like nursing yeah. license and just renews it every, just like, yeah. You guys are a similar mindset. I'm just like, we just need the safety now. Let's just make sure that we got something we can go back 100%. to just in case. And also there's a little bit of pride and stubbornness. And yeah. like, I'm not letting that lapse. Like I worked really hard yeah, for yeah. that. So, um, so yeah, I was doing that. I did that for 10 years, actually more than that, maybe 11 or 12. But anyways, in 2020, uh, yep. Cause I started in January of 2021. Right. So in 2020, we hit COVID, all right? So COVID changed so many people's lives and it changed my life like crazy, mm -hmm. right? So um, I was, my job was really difficult at the time because of course all hospitals have these crazy standards and protocols yep. with COVID. Um, but then all of a sudden, all the schools shut down. So Hank and I have three kids. They're, at the time they were younger, but right now they're four, seven and 10. Yep. And they were at home and nobody, they needed someone to teach them, you know, and you didn't ask anybody into your house because COVID, right? Yep. And, uh, and so I left my job at that time and Hank, uh, he had just maybe a year before sort of started his own construction business. Right. 
he was doing the renovation on your beachfront house That's on right. all yeah, yeah. palms. So this was all happening at once. That's so right. He was renovating your house, um, and. And I was at home, I was trying to teach the kids, I was selling barbecue sauce, even though you had to sell it with a mask on and not yeah. let people taste it and you know, do all those things. And I think, rewind for a second, we've known you for 10 years. Yep. We've been friends with you, right? Long, uh, what, 2010, 2011 we probably met? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that was exactly But at that time we we've known each other for 10 years, yeah. Yeah, so at that time we had known each other for 10 years and, um, and you, reached out to me and you were like, you know, I know you're at home. I, I have an uh, idea, something you might be interested in yep. if you want to essentially sort of manage my education business. Yep. And I think, you know, there was some trepidation because I'm like, how can I, I I'm a physical therapist, like, yep. you know, but you had a lot of confidence in me. Like you knew that I could do it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, I started, I hit the ground running. I think you, you knew that I could do it, but I don't even know if you knew how I don't do anything halfway and I don't do anything without 100% well, effort. And that's, and that's what I knew about you, right? Yeah. So it's like, I can teach you about the inner workings of, I don't know, the masterminds and like how we host these things and how we try to bring value to other, to, to other entrepreneurs and stuff. But like, I just need somebody who knows how to problem solve, right? I need somebody who is resourceful. I need, like that's what I was looking for. And that to me, with a good attitude, yeah. who knows how to navigate conversations, and um, like like that to me, those are skill sets that you hire for, and you can teach all the technical type mm -hmm. stuff, you know. And so you checked all those boxes, and I was like, and I and I, because we've known each other for ten years, yeah. I knew what your work ethic was, I knew what your values and what you stood for were, and you know, and I and we were good friends, and I remember sitting down and saying, hey, we're friends, and you said, hey Tim, I don't want this to affect our friendship. I said. Well, it, it won't, right? Because yeah. we can openly have a dialogue on this. We can openly communicate about this stuff. And um, if it's ever, you know, we need to go one way or you need to go another mm -hmm. way or whatever, and it's not, you know, working for both of us, then we just have a conversation yeah. about that. I remember you know? we had that conversation that day we met in the coffee yep. shop. Yep. Um, but just back to your point of, of being in this environment, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I have... First of all, it stretched me so much. Um, it's made me realize that I'm capable of things that I had no idea that I was capable yep. of. You know, whether it be just self limitations or self doubt or maybe even societal limitations as a woman that maybe you think you can't do. Um, and then you get in these rooms and you're surrounded by all of these successful entrepreneurs that are, that are killing it and they're supporting one another. And you really realize like, I can do this. Yep. Like I, 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 I found things in myself that I, that are superpowers that I didn't even know were superpowers, right? Mm -hmm. That I'd probably had like most of my life, but I took for granted. Yep. And it took being in those the rooms with all of these people to to realize that. Yep. Um, and you know, I've I've learned so much. I've learned the power of of being in the right rooms. I've learned the power of, of speaking your goals and, yep. and saying it out loud to a bunch of other people, even though it might be scary, but telling other people what you want for your life. And I've seen the power of it yep. and how so many of our members have grown enormous, enormously just by speaking their goals and making it real and mm -hmm. making it tangible and putting it out there and putting themselves out there. Um, and maybe they don't know how it's going to, like how they're going to get there, but by saying, hey, this is what I want to achieve, this is what I'd love to do, then all of a sudden, there's other people who can give you ideas, insights, strategies, point you in the right direction, make an introduction for you, that then, wow, it's, it takes this, this huge gap that you thought, I don't know how I'm gonna, and all of a sudden it starts bridging it, right? It starts making it more achievable, more attainable, more believable, and, and then, it holds you accountable, right? And then yeah. it, it, it creates additional belief and additional confidence uh, by being in those rooms. Yeah, and the connections are real. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> the people in Legacy Family, not just the team. Yep. I mean, y'all are really like family to mm -hmm. me. That's why it was so hard for me to <laughs> call you and tell you that I was leaving. Yep. You know, it's very difficult for me. One of the hardest decisions I've ever made. Mm -hmm. Um, but not only the team is my family, the members are my family. Yeah. Um, you know, it, and the connections are genuine. And, and 
these people, I, I would do almost anything for them, and I know they would do the same for yep. me, which is which is really neat. And I thought about it that when I knew I was going to come on Spill the Beans with you, and I thought about all the things I've learned. And I think another thing that I've learned, because I think people set set limitations on themselves um, monetarily, right? Like, like not just I can only make this much or I can only do this much. It's it's well, how will I get that done? I can't pay for that, mm-hmm. right? And being in this room has shown me um, that the highest form of payment is not always monetary. Mm -hmm. And the last commercial empire event, we had our guest panelists that we always have. And Jeff Guo was one of them. And Mm -hmm. like so many of the members are near and dear to my heart, but you know very well that Jeff is incredibly special to me. (laughs) I just adore him. And I remember when you were talking about, you asked him about some takeaways. And he said that every time someone helps him with something, he always asks himself what like unique abilities or talents does he have that he can pay them back even more than what they did for him. Mm-hmm. And it has nothing to do with money. Mm-hmm. And and at that point, I you know I knew that I was moving on and gonna Hank and work and I were gonna work together. But I think when he said that, I was like it really made me also realize like I have a lot that I can offer. Very much so. Um, and it made me sort of reflect on my superpowers. And, and you did mention like just being a relationship cultivator and, and like cultivating genuine relationships and really caring for people. I never knew that was a superpower. I mean, it's something that most people in the healthcare industry do. Yep. But it really is. It's like expected in the healthcare industry, it's right? expected. Because you have that, that, nurturing nature mm-hmm. that's not very common in the business world in the business world you're either you know like like breaking records yeah. lighting the world on fires trying to accomplish anything at anybody's uh expense right yeah or uh you're there to just have a good time and party and have fun and work hard play hard kind of a thing there's not a lot of nurturers Mm-mm. in the business world right um and you're right, and it's hard to find those t- that type of personality too, which is what I've recognized in people who are go getters, people who are, you know, entrepreneurs. And we're, it's it, a lot of times those personality traits don't necessarily go hand in hand, right. or either they have to be honed and practiced. Um, you know, and another another thing is a lot of times nurturing personalities don't necessarily go with people who are very operational. And that's what I was. Yeah. And, and, and I was know, just going to say that it's very like very detail oriented. It's almost two different ends of the. Well, I'm I'm thinking about like a disc assessment, right? Mm-hmm. And so like you're high S, at least socially you're very high S in in the support and the nurturing type role. You're very analytical though too, where you can understand operations and systems and processes and that side of things. Uh, you love to have a good time, right? Mm-hmm. So you're very I-oriented. And at the same time, you're very de-oriented too in like, I wanna get things yeah. done and move the needle forward, but you're very tactical, tactful in the way that you do it. So it's a very unique behavioral assessment. Like, didn't you just do like a predictive index Yes, or something? yeah, and that's exactly what it showed. Little and Like balance across all of them? Uh-huh. And Mike McCloskey, who will be um, in June, Chicago yep. at the June Summit, he'll be presenting. And it's pretty impressive the way, the self-reflection that happens when you do the predictive index and what it tells you about yourself, but also maybe about um, how other people v- view you mm-hmm. um, and about the uh, appropriate seat for you, yep. right? So, like, you might you might not be in the best seat right. in the company. You might be an A player in the wrong seat. like, And because of that, you're not performing at your highest level. And you might look like a B or C player. Mm-hmm. But it's not your fault, or it's not that employee's fault. It's the business owner's fault for not putting them in the right seat. Yes, exactly, exactly. And so so I've, I've learned that about myself. And I've, I've learned that I am a problem solver. Mm-hmm. And that was what was so fun to do because... In this position, I did plan events, you know, and that's a, that's hard. That's a that's a huge task, but that's only a small amount of what I do. And I'm I'm so glad that Annalise has taken that over. She's a rock star. She's mm-hmm. gonna be, she's amazing at it. But but you know, 
I feel like on a day to day basis, that's what I, I'm a problem solver. You yep. know, I figure out, okay, how can we make this better? Yep. Um, and it's a lot of like self initiating of doing that. What's the next step to just make anything better, right? The yep. communication with the students or the offerings or the portal or maybe they, maybe things just need to be clear, more clearly communicated. Yep. Um, that type of thing. So I've realized that about myself and, and, I've also understood now more than any time that I have a lot of grit and yep. I'm, I'm very excited to now take that and implement that in, in Hank's, which is our business, yep. you know, and especially having kids at home. I mean, I'm really happy for them to be able to watch us move towards the same goals mm -hmm. and conquer goals together and grow a business together and even even let them help us, right? Mm -hmm. Teach them and, and they get to watch how we implement things and they can be a part of it. Um, yeah. Are you, are you uh, what are your expectations about working with your husband? I you think, know, I think that's, one, me that. Yeah, that's one of those things <laughs> that I think a lot of people, you know, yeah. the idea sounds good, maybe it doesn't end up that good or maybe you didn't want to do it and then it ends up working out really, really well, mm -hmm. you know? You guys are, uh, we were talking off, actually before you got here, yeah. uh, like Hank's very good at the construction, like he understands construction, he's very good at that, but he, like, I, I'm excited for him and for you guys because you can take his business and as good as he is at as the construction elements, having somebody with your skill sets kind of uh, helping to run the business, the yeah. business development side of things is gonna take him and 10X his business, which is why you need more equity uh, than 50-50. Uh, than <laughs> you need, you say, hey, Hank, yeah, you're doing this much this. right now, I want 90% of yeah, everything above I'll that. Yeah, I'll get you know? the Vincent brothers on that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They can definitely help us but out. What are your thoughts about working with your husband and yeah. how, how are you setting those parameters, those expectations of Hank, this is what I'm going to be doing. This is what you're going to be doing. Um, how do we communicate? Like, like, yeah. what are your thoughts on that? Well, I love that question because you're not the first person to ask me. Pretty much everyone, every couple who has heard that we are going to work together, mostly couples who already work together, yep. right? They have been like, so how's that going to really work, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? And my initial response and my gut reaction is, well, Hank and I have been married for 15 years this August. Mm -hmm. And we are very different, as like you said. Um, I think we're both very nurturing people, but at the same time, we have different superpowers. Yep. Um, but we have three kids that we have raised together. Which is like a business of it its is own. So Yes, and you get it. Mm -hmm. and, and we're not 50-50 even. We're both 100-100 when mm -hmm. it comes to, you know, it's, it's people always talk about 50-50, but I feel like he gives so much and I give so much to our us as a family unit yep. um, and we work very much um, as a team in that aspect and I think that that will carry over into the business. I mean, I'm not naive in the fact that I know that things will be hard and we'll have disagreements and um, you know, it's not the same as raising a family, yep. but I can see the way we work together as parents and how that will work in his business. Um, and we're both very aware. And how he succumbs to your decision making in, in most household as long decisions. As he always agrees with me, we'll get along. <laughs> exactly. So. It's going to be easy. It's really going to be easy. <laughs> yeah, and there are things um, like operationally that I'm already have ideas to set in place. We've been looking at some construction software that I'm really excited about. Um, and. From a marketing perspective, I can't wait to like cultivate relationships in the community and help with that. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how proud I am of Hank because, so the company's called Maxwell Creative Contracting and he started it, gosh, I guess, I guess now almost four years ago. Yeah. Um, but he, it has done well. Of course, he does work with you. Um, but in the locally, he has gotten business with absolutely no marketing. Yep. It has been all word of mouth um, because, as you know, it's very, very difficult to find a good contractor. Yep. And he is someone that owners want to work with and subcontractors want to work for mm -hmm. because he does what he says he's going to do. And you and I have had this conversation multiple times about people doing what they say they're going to do, and we agree that 
probably only 10% of the population actually do what they say I mean, that, they're going to do. It differentiates you so much if you just do what you like. That's 90% of the battle, right? Yeah. Like just doing what you said you were going to do. And you and and it's it's night and day and, and you can differentiate yourself and raise rise yourself to the top in every industry in every circumstance if you just follow through. Yeah. And like I I I know a guy who's worth probably a couple hundred million dollars and the advice that he gave to his kids, life advice when they graduated from high school was expect that people aren't who they say that they are and they're not going to do what they say that they're going to do. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's as grim and sad as that sounds. If you have very, he's trying to set his kids with a very low expectation mm -hmm. of what to expect from other people, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's, unfortunately, the world that we live in is most people don't do it. And they can be fake on social media. But if you just follow through and, and you say, hey, I'm going to do this. Or don't set the expectation that you're going to do something if you know you're not, you can't fulfill right. it. Um, uh, then, and, and a lot of people are yes people. And they don't mean to not follow through. Uh, but, a, but a lot of them are just yes people. And they just say that they're going to do something. And then they don't. Or they forget, forget about it. And um, uh, that's something I've had to work on, right? Because I want to please everybody. I say yes to everything, and then it's turned into this, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not fulfilling my obligation to hop right. on that phone call or to make that connection when I, when I really wanted to. I just need to not you know, commit to doing that because I can't fulfill on it. And so I've been able to say no a lot more and just mm -hmm. you know, acknowledge that. But like following through on what you say you're going to do totally sets you apart from anybody else. Yeah, and I love it that you say that he taught his, that's what he said to his kids, because I think it also creates an environment where you don't raise children that have a, a victim, like I am the victim, yeah. right, type of personality, because they know that they can't control other people, but they can control themselves. Right. And and that is what that I try to teach my kids, but... Um, but yes, when it comes to Hank's business, like he does what he says he's going to do. So, so it has been like word of mouth. People have, I mean, he's kind of taken over Shim Creek a little bit, you know, with the properties that he's, that, um, that he's working on, whether he's building pools or doing complete renovations. It's, it's very exciting. But I, but I look forward to stepping into that role of helping him to market now. Because imagine what he can do once we do work more on you know, his brand and his website and his social media, but also just making connections in the community that mm -hmm. he hasn't had the time or, to make or nor really had to until now that that I come on and I'm like, we're growing this, we're yeah. doing this, you know, I'm super excited. And, you know, he's had two new hires within the last year and, you know, the hope is to bring on more people and, and just help the, the business to continue to grow. I love it. I love yeah. it. And so you're going to be taking in more of a, stepping in more of a business development mm -hmm. portion, helping out with the branding, helping out with systems and processes and those kinds of things, marketing, scaling that side. How about on like the day-to-day -day, uh, construction side of things? Are you just, are you kind of, I mean, he's got a couple of great people that yeah. can support on that. So you're going to be focused more on just driving business, driving revenue, mm -hmm. and then he'll focus on more of the fulfillment side? Yeah, absolutely. And, and my hope is that we can get scheduling down to more of a science with some software implementation. And then I can also monitor that, like the day-to-day -day schedule, just make sure like that there's follow through, kind of what I do now, right? Yep. Like yep. With, with helping out Annalise and, and monitoring Kelly. Um, so on the day-to-day -day side, that's what I, I will probably sort of have my hands in, but I do want to be a part of sort of the bigger vision. Yep. That's what excites me more. Um, but I love, I mean, I love construction. I love seeing something become new, become different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the hope is that we can build our own own things at some well, point. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Is, like, is the thought process to grow the construction business or to grow more of an investment I love it. portfolio? Thank you. I guess both. So I think what we, we would need to start with the construction business. I think I'm a firm believer in don't you need to get something that's going right now right before you move on to something else. So let's make sure, and not that the construction business is not right, it is right, but I want to, I just want to make it even better. Yep. And then 
ultimately our goal is to then be more on the investor side um, of things. And even if, you know, just as, just an, some, active, as, as an, an active, as an active developer, an active developer, not, yeah, not a passive investor, not but, passive, right. but as a developer and, and, you know, creative coming up with creative deals. I mean, Lord knows we now I feel like we know you, we know so many people, we've made connections in Legacy Family and just people that we would love to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and I have uh, just a lot of it, uh, ideas that make me excited mm -hmm. about things that we would like to develop and partner with people on yep. and, and things like that. Um, so yes, is that going to be in the works sort of at the same time, you know, but I want to make sure that we, we really make sure that everything is running. You know, I'm the ops girl, so I want everything to be running just right on the construction side um, before we implement that. Go well, I think it's, in. I think it's one of the misconceptions I think a lot of people get into is that like they're gonna get rich off of buying and holding things right away, right? And, and I, I, I like where your head's at because you understand like we need revenue coming in right now how do we generate more revenue right now and and have that fast money yeah. while we build the long-term wealth right yeah. like you, you got to have this figured out first um or, or in in conjunction with building this right like when i first got started kate had a job and she had money predictable money coming in every single month and then i could then go and fumble through trying to build a portfolio but i didn't mm -hmm. have to make money over here or I can take the, the wins and roll them forward because Kate was able to keep everything afloat on a day-to-day basis. And so it allowed us to do both those things. Now I have businesses that generate predictable monthly cash and I can host an event, right? And sell tickets right. to it and have, a, have a, um, uh, an influx of capital this month if I need an influx of capital by doing something like that. Uh, so I have that fast money that way while I don't have to worry about um, pulling cash flow off the table from our investments mm -hmm. or doing a new construction, right? This is gonna be right. very important for you on a cash flow management standpoint because you're gonna contract a property, put all the different approvals in place and entitlements and everything like that and build it for two years before you ever get a dollar back out of it, you know? And so uh, understanding that we gotta make money on the construction side. Yes while you're in conjunction building the, the long-term wealth, doing both of them at the same time, I think is really, really important. I like that your, your head's in the right place, I think, on that though. Yeah, and we, we get really excited when we have those wins, you know, like when he finishes a project and, you know, he pays, he pays his subs first, right? He pays his people first, he takes care of them. But then if we have a win and we have money at, like at the end and we're like, okay, we're, we're gonna be able, we're gonna invest this, you know? And we get excited about talking about plans and what we're gonna do and when I come on board, how we're going to handle it and things like that. Um, and, you know, celebrating those little wins, it's yep. huge. But you're right, like just knowing, I, if, if I didn't, you know me, I'm like, I'm like Kate, I need that like... Predictability. Ooh, yeah. yeah, so I, don't, I would not have been able to leave if I had not known that there was going to be cash flow. Mm -hmm. Because as, as, you know, brave as I believe myself to be, yep. <laughs> I need. I would have needed that, you know, to give me the confidence. And and, and it is. We're at a place right now where, where he has that, um, and we'll be able to sort of develop the biz, both businesses from the the investments and the construct ground up construction. Our our large renovations. Like he loves all of it, and um, and even the barbecue sauce. Right. Like lately, I've had some. It's doing pretty good locally. Um, it's called Metz Barbecue Sauce, but um, really, really good. It's really good. Carolina, it's got mu mustard base, so yeah. you got to understand that Kate's not a mustard girl. So like, but I love freaking mustard, yeah. and it's it's not like overly powerling, uh, mm -hmm. but it's a it's a Carolina mustard base thing. Uh, but I don't like like the vinegar one. Like right. I love your guys's barbecue oh, sauce. Thanks. It's it's my favorite. It's it has been a labor of love because it was his great grandmother's recipe, right. you know, and we. Went through all the, it took about two years to go through all the approval processes and get it professionally bottled where we can sell it. But with that said, you know, it's doing pretty well locally. Mm -hmm. But w recently I've had some national distributors reach out just from finding, you know, I put, I put it on some wholesale sites a while back. Um, didn't really get much traction because then I started working with you, you know, and so that kind of 
I didn't address that as much, but just recently it's like, it's like God is really good. We've been blessed because just recently we've had some, some national wholesalers reach out and I'm excited to get the conversation started with them. Right. Um, even this company in Canada, which I thought was so weird, called Barbecue Sauce Nation, they reached out and they're carrying our sauce and they, they carry just not very many sauces. So just just little, again, little wins that yeah. are like, it gets you kind of pumped up because you get that motivation like, wow, you know, I can do this. So yeah. so that that's another venture that I'm excited about. And, and the cool part is like, I, I talk about this from like a business perspective once in a while of, uh, you know, being in a group of other entrepreneurs that you have deep relationships with, right? Like the people that we know in Legacy Family and, and some other friends in business, we know we can take big swings if we, if we want and look at those, not, not being careless, not being reckless by, by any means, but pursue opportunities. And we know that if we swing and miss and things get tough, we, hey, I can call my buddy Mark. I can call Dusty. I can call Kelly. I, hey, but I need some help, right? Yeah. Like, hey, can you front me X number of dollars so I can keep things running for get a little bit more uh, runway on this thing until I can get it rolling again? And just knowing that, not that I think I ever have to make that phone call, but knowing that I could make that phone call and there's dozens of people who would give me 50 to 100 grand you know, of runway and that they could do it with me too. It gives you a level of confidence in... Uh, in business to again take those opportunities and uh, mm-hmm. jump like you leaving this role working in the business let's let's say a horrible economic catastrophe occurs and things slow down to a halt where you're like oh shit it didn't work out the way that we hoped or not in the timeline we hoped uh, hey Tim can we partner back up absolutely right yeah. like and you yeah. knowing that there's a safety net there of uh, there's always ways that we can do stuff together and, and, yeah. and work on things together. Like, I think that's a cool thing to have and be able to pursue those endeavors and pursue those opportunities. You're you know? right. It's so reassuring. And, I, and now that I've been a part of this community, it does make me wonder how anybody does it without. Right. Um, that's a good I, point. I certainly didn't have the... It's a lot more lonely without it's it. So it's, a, it's a lot it's more so difficult. Lonely. And, and cer- certainly I had confidence in myself, but I didn't have confidence that I could conquer all these huge goals that seemed unattainable, right? Like on a day-to-day basis, I, I feel like I'm a confident person. Uh-huh. But, but then before I joined this group, before I was part of this community, I never would have thought to myself, I can take over the world. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and that's what it feels like just just because of that safety net, exactly what you're talking Mm -hmm. about. Like, I have, just like I believe in all of you and I have all of these family members that I believe in, like, they believe in me. And Mm -hmm. I know that, like, I could call you or I could call Kelly Garrett and be like, Kelly, this is is what I'm dealing with. This is where my head's at. You know, is there a way we can make this work? And she would... She would do anything, and I would do anything for her. And right. the same with us, right? Yep. And and so it does make me wonder how people did it. People do it when they don't have that community because you and I, we both, we don't come from wealthy parents, right? right? We were never, we never had that safety net in our family. Like mm-hmm. I never thought, well, if I fail this this semester in college, my parents aren't going to mind because yeah, they, yeah. you know, it's like yeah. they're going like to care. You, they're going to care. You better. They're going to care. You know. So yeah. I just never had that feeling of a safety net. Um, you know, knowing I could, I could sort of step out and and take some risk and really reach for big goals. Um, but now, after being in this community, like I have this this confidence knowing that I can because I have a ton of people who who support me. Yep. Um, and yep. and it's exciting. Yep. You know, to feel that way, it's a sense of relief and, and that there's limitless possibilities. Yes. Yep. And I hope that people know, and I'm serious, like, I want to help them. Like, you, we talk about this a lot. Like, we're here to help one another because we don't succeed alone, you know. And, and I think if anybody takes anything away from Legacy Family, it should be we succeed together, right? Yep. We, we all succeed better together. Yep. Um, and one plus one equals three. Yeah, you know, and so so I just, I hope they know that they can come to me um, and, and I'll help in any way that I can, yep. you know, too. 
So I love it. No, yeah. I think I think it's it's super exciting. You know, a lot of people come. Oh, what do you think about Sarah leaving? I was like. I think it's friggin' amazing. I think it's like the ultimate testimonial of what yeah. a mastermind can do. You know, yeah. like, like you're, you, you come in from a totally different industry with no background in the investment side of doing what we do, right? Husband's got a brand new business in the construction realm of transactional construction, mm -hmm. right? And then two and a half, three years essentially in, feel, hey, I've, like the three-year rule, right? Yeah. Planted the seeds, cultivated the seeds. Now they're sprouting. Now the harvest is starting. To, and and, and uh, you develop those relationships. You cultivated those relationships. You uh, now understand both the technical elements of how to invest, the technical or the, the relationship capital that it takes to do that, the resources, the, the connections, all those kinds of things, the confidence, the borrowed belief, and then um, the recurring belief after you do it once, I can do it again kind mm -hmm. of a thing. And all those things have culminated. And again, I think it's like the ultimate testimonial. Yeah. It's the ultimate, uh, uh, you know, statement of saying, hey, this is what it's like to be in this kind of a group, tap into these kinds of resources, be relationship driven and be able to make a big change in your life inside 36 mm -hmm. months, you know? And so I think it's super cool. I'm super excited for you. Thank super proud you. of you. And, uh, uh, I, when I saw Hank after we had that phone call, um, I was like, hey man, heard you, heard you gained an A player. Congratulations. Oh. <laughs> Super proud of you, buddy. And um, yeah, yeah it's, I think it's just, it's exciting to see, you know, what you've been able to do and, and we appreciate you so much yeah, from what you've been you. able to do with us in the past couple of years. And um, our mastermind wouldn't be where it is, you know, if you hadn't been part of it. That. And so you, you, um, provided a ton of value to you. I'm glad that we were able to provide a ton of value. Mm -hmm. uh, or, I'm sorry, you provided a ton of value to us. I got you. I'm, gl I'm glad we were you know, able to provide a ton of value yeah. to you <laughs> and, um, and, and reciprocate in that. And it's just, it's exciting to see what the next chapter looks like. Yeah. And um, we've had this conversation many a times and said, hey, it's not goodbye. Like we're just, we're yeah. gonna work together in different capacities. I may even see you more. Not right. And, right. I, and I have to be honest, like the day that I said, okay, I care so much about these this, these people. Like, I want to give them six weeks' notice at least. Like, I want to set them up for continued success, you know. And 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 I know that y'all will, of course. Um, but I said I got to call everybody today, mm -hmm. and I and I was like, I'm going to call every member of this team because they all mean so much to me. Mm -hmm. And I called you first, and of course I boohooed. And you're, but the way that you received the information was so graceful and so um, encouraging it couldn't have been better and I remember I even called Kate your wife because you know she's a dear friend of yeah. mine and I'm like Kate you know I could hardly tell her and then I told her how you received me and she just started bawling on yeah, the phone she, yeah, she's so like she's like it was like it made her proud and um, but of course why would she expect any different and Everyone received it that way, you know, with their own little personalities. Because yeah. this team is so funny because we're all different, yeah. and that's what makes it so cool. But um, one thing that will stick with me forever is Matt. When I call, he was the last person I talked to because I couldn't get a hold of him, and he called me that night, and um, and I told him, and he just listened, and and then he said, Sarah, the only bad thing that can come out of this is if we can't help you and Hank. And I will never forget that. It could make me cry right now mm -hmm. because I felt that from all of you. Mm -hmm. But he, he said that, yep. you know, and, and it's, it is a testament. It's a testament to y'all. It's a testament to this team. It's a testament to what Legacy Family is all about. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I mean, I couldn't be more grateful for, for the time that I have spent with y'all and for everybody else. So. It's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. No, well, we, we appreciate you. We love yeah. you so much. We're so Thank excited you. for what the next chapter looks like for you and there's anything that we can do to help you know make it a smooth transition or help help uh things grow and scale over the next couple of years obviously you know where to find us thank you have a hug <laughs> oh thanks tim sarah um, i love you thank you for everything that you've done for legacy family you're just the best hey sarah just want to say thank you so much for being a part 
the Legacy family for getting guys like me. We're so thankful to be, you know, associated with you, your friends, your good news, your husband, your family. We're going to miss you, but we know that we're going to see you soon. We're so excited about your future endeavor and the family business. So take care. We'll see you next time. Sarah, don't leave us. Okay, we know you're not actually leaving, but we're so proud of what you're doing. We're so proud of the next steps you're going to be doing. Helping Hank, helping the business, helping the family. We love you, Sarah. We're so proud of you. Sarah, we're going to miss you. Thank you so much for everything you did at Legacy Family. And we're really going to miss you. Damn it. Yeah, damn it. Uh, I'm definitely going to miss Sarah as well, too. Uh, beautiful face. Hank, we better hold on to her. Sarah, we love you. We're going to miss you. And we're going to track you down and hang out with you, too. Hey, Sarah. Totally going to miss you 100%, but I'm also going to see you a lot. I have a great feeling about all of your future endeavors. Love ya. Thanks so much. We love you. We're going to miss you. Hope to keep seeing you around. Sarah, thank you for the hard work and dedication to all the events. Miss you. Thank you for everything you do, Sarah. Good luck. Bye, Sarah. We wish you the best of luck. <laughs> We're saying goodbye to Sarah. I refuse to say goodbye to Sarah. We will see you soon. We love you. You're an incredible part of the Legacy family. We appreciate you. And uh, it's been awesome to see how this thing has grown over the years and your impact on all of us. So we appreciate you. We love you. And uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah. Sarah, we've only known each other a short yeah, period yeah, of time. Yeah. I just want to say I'm going to miss you. You're our best friend. But, uh, Tabor, Tabor. I'm going to take good care of Hank. I'll make sure nothing bad happens to him. Yeah, right. <laughs> We love you, Sarah. We're so thankful for everything that you have built, everything you've done. It's not going to be the same without you, but I'm sure we'll be seeing you for a lot, right? We'll see you soon. You want to train Sarah? Let's do it. Sarah, we love you. Thank you for everything you've done over the past two and a half years. Uh, Legacy Family and Legacy Well Education would not be where it is without you. So we appreciate you so much from me, Nick, Matt. Fatty, Scott, the whole rest of the Legacy team, really appreciate you. Love you. Wish you great things for the next chapter of your life. Excited to see what it brings. Three, two, one. Bye, Sarah. Bye. It's always amazing to sit down with Sarah. She's such an awesome person. Um, and it's going to be really exciting to watch her journey over the course of the next couple of years here. Because uh, I know she's going to help her husband take things to the next level. And um, it's just it's fun to see. So uh, love, love seeing the success stories. Even though she's not part of our team anymore, she's very much uh, a dear friend of ours and uh, couldn't be more proud of what she's accomplished and what she's going to continue to accomplish in this next chapter of her life. So appreciate you guys being here. We'll see you next week on Spilling the Beans.